Hi, my name is James, and in this video, I'm going to be taking you through a quick tutorial on how to derive the equation i equals a for physics. If you're doing AS level physics um, at A level at the moment uh, in school, then you may be asked in an exam paper just to straight out derive this equation for four or five marks, something like that. Alternatively, you could be given questions involving the equation i equals a. So perhaps they give you the current, the electron density. Uh, the diameter of a wire and they also tell you just in case you've forgotten on your formula sheet um, the fundamental charge on an electron. Um, at the moment that sounds a bit overwhelming but hopefully once I've gone through this derivation with you and then I take you through one or two practice questions uh, at the end of that then you should feel quite confident in doing that and be able to do it in an exam if the question turns up. So we start off with um, a wire and it's we've also got like electrons moving around in it and if there's a charge um, a current if there's a current going through that wire then these charged particles electrons are moving through it and what we say is that in a time t a displacement of l occurs over a cross sectional area of a so our displacement l is sort of how far along the electrons are moving across the wire and like hence the length and our cross-sectional area is the cross-sectional area of the wire, which I sort of, uh, not highlighted, but done lines over here so you can see what it is. So if you just cut it open, it's sort of the surface area of that cut wire. Uh, we also know that the volume of a cylinder is that cross-section area times the length. Uh, so this is our first step, our building block, to our equation of I equals nave. So for our next step, we want to look at electrons and electron density. So um, electron density is simply the number of electrons divided by the volume. Like Just like the normal density, um, density of mass is the mass divided by the volume. It's the amount of something divided by how much like volume we have of it. Um, so yeah, so that means we can also rearrange that quite simply. And our number of electrons is equal to the electron density times the volume. So we said just a minute ago that volume was equal to cross-section area times length. Therefore, we can say that number of electrons is equal to electron density times cross-section area of the wire times the length of the wire that the electrons are moving across. This gives us now our second step. Next, we want to look at charge. So the total charge that's moving across our cross-sectional area is the elementary charge, which is the charge of a single electron, times the number of electrons. So this is quite intuitive, right? The total, uh, say, mass of 10 weights is 10 times their weight, each one's weight, uh, providing they're all identically, uh, they will have an identical mass, which in this case, the electrons all have an identical charge. This charge is very small. It's 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs like it's really tiny so that means obviously one coulomb of charge um, would be a total of 1.602 times 10 to the 19 electrons so um, anyway this gives us uh, charge equals elementary charge times the number of electrons and we just said that the number of electrons is equal to electron density times the volume and the volume is equal to the uh, cross section area times the length so it gives, uh, gives us now number of electrons, cross-sectional area, length, and electron density. For our next step, we're going to be looking at current. So current is equal to our uh, change in charge, which I've represented by the lower ca uh, uppercase delta change in. So we've got change in charge over cross-sectional area, which uh, takes place over time or a change in time. Um, so. For our current, we just want to divide charge, uh, which we said was nail, over T. Simple. So we've got nail over T, which is equal to our current. Now we want to look at the drift velocity of electrons. And the drift velocity is simply the average uh, velocity at which the electrons are moving across the wire. And um, we know that this is quite simply just the displacement over time. So we can say the V equals L over T. Now remember, this V is no longer volume. It's not volume for the cylinder earlier. This V rep represents the drift velocity of electrons. 
So we change our I equals nl over t to just I equals n a l over t e. Uh, this doesn't make this is identical. Um, just like if we really divide one of the things that's being multiplied by a number, it's the same as dividing the whole equation by a number. So this gives us uh, what we want. It gives us I equals nav. Perfect. So now we've derived that, we're going to look at a question, uh, a question that utilises this equation. So, uh, we've got a question and it wants us to work out the drift velocity of an electron, or the electrons passing through the wire. And we're given the following information. We are told that it's made out of copper wire, and the electron density of copper wire is 8.49 times 10 to the 24 uh, per metre cubed. Uh, we're also told that the uh, current flowing through this wire is 1.5 amps. And just in case we forgot, uh, like I said earlier, or it wasn't on your um, equation sheet, whatever, we're given the ele elementary charge of an electron, which is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. Finally, we are told that the diameter of the wire is 0 0.7 millimetres. Uh, if you want, you can pause this video, uh, take a second to figure out um, how you're going to do this question. Um, and, oh yeah, also, no, it's not 24, sorry, it's, uh, I've wrote 28 there and then 24 that, that should be 28, 8.49 times 10 to the 28 uh, per meter cube, sorry about that, but anyway, um, if you think you can work this out, go ahead, otherwise pause the video. And I'm now going to show you the answer. So first of all, uh, we need to work out the cross-section area because we don't have that information yet. We are told that we have a diameter of 0 0.7 millimetres. Um, and we also know the area. So we can work out the cross-section area using the area of a circle because we're going to assume that this wire is a cylinder. Um, so our radius is going to be 0 0.7 millimetres over 2. Uh, if we want to, we want to translate this into meters because we want all of the units to be. Um, I'm not sure what the words, but we want so, uh, standard scientific units. I think it's all, but yeah, we want all length to be in meters for the purpose of calculation of this calculation um, because we want to find the drift velocity of the electrons in meters per second, not millimeters per second. Um, so. Our radius is 3.5 times 10 to the minus 5 meters, and that means pi r squared is 0 0.000038, or we can just call this 0, uh, sorry 3.8 times 10 to the minus 7 meters squared. That's our cross-sectional area. So now we've got all of the things we need in the equation eh, to plug into the equation. We can do that. So. That's, uh, that just says, uh, now look at the answer, it's not quite in the camera shot. Um, so yeah, we've got I equals nave. We can rearrange that to V equals I over NAE. The way we do that is we simply divide both sides of the equation by NAE. So then we've just left with V, and that's divided by NAE. So if we plug in all the values, uh, 1.5 over 8.49 times 10 to the 28 times 3.8 times 10 to the minus 7 times 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19, then you should get an answer of 2.9 times 10 to the minus 4 meters per second. Uh, you might get something like 2.87 or whatever, depending on if you rounded in different places. Um, but that's uh, to two significant figures. That's the answer you should be looking at. Um, now, if, if you want, then uh, you can go for another question that I'm about to do. So I'm going to ask you to prove, well, not prove, but just show that the, the electron density of copper is 8.49 uh, times 10 to the 28. And here's the information that I'm going to give you. So we know the density of copper is 8,960 kilograms per meter cubed of copper. The mass of one mole of copper is 63.5 grams. And I'm also going to tell you that Avogadro's constant is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Avogadro's constant is literally just the number of atoms in a mole, and a mole of copper is therefore 6.02 times 23 atoms of it. That's all a mole is. It's 6.02 times 20 to, uh, times 10 to the 23 atoms of whatever the mole is. So mole of carbon, again 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon. 
Again, if you want to have a go at this, pause the video because I'm now going to show you the answer. So, we've got 8,960 kilograms of copper in a meter squared of it, meter cubed of it, sorry. And that means that we've got 8,960,000 grams of copper and we've got that at 63.5 grams per mole. And that means uh, by dividing 8,960,000 by 63.5, we can work out that we have 141,102 moles of copper. Uh, using Avogadro's constant, we know that in each of those moles, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of copper. And multiply those two together, we get 8.5 times 10 to the 28 atoms of copper in a meter cubed. Uh, what we do when we do this is we're going to assume that each atom only has a single free electron. Obviously, this is quite a broad assumption and it's very unlikely. But uh, if we just sort of average it out in most circumstances, that's the best thing we can do for an estimate. So that that uh, shows us that we've got 8.5 times 10 to 28 um, electrons per meter cubed of copper. So that's its electron density. Uh, why have I asked you to do this? It doesn't seem to have anything to do with I equals nave. It's because it's a question, it's a sort of question that could come up prior to I equals nave, or sort of like in its topic. So it might ask you to work out the electron density of a certain material, uh, and then that's one of the things you use to then do a question working out, say, the drift electron ve uh, velocity. So, like in an exam, you might have this question. And then the question I just did a few minutes ago with you about working out the drift velocity of the electrons when the current is 1.5 amps and you've got copper and all of the other details they give you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I know it's been a bit of a long video and also it's taken me quite a while to get it up with audio because I've kept trying to record it and every time uh, movie ma there's either been a problem with Movie Maker or my camera or something like that. So it's taken me a while to get this recorded and then published as well. That's been quite difficult because of the file size and my Wi-Fi is just absolute crap. Um, but anyway, yeah, hopefully you're going to find this useful um, if you're doing AS Physics. And you should check out any of my other videos if, you're, if you just found the, the video interesting in general. Yeah, I do videos on economics and then just random interesting facts uh, on certain topics. But yeah, if you do like my channel, subscribe, uh, give it a like, uh, give me a comment down in the comment section if there's something you think I could improve on, anything like that. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye!